Get ready for a real roller coaster of a cruise update. Just as news was breaking that eight lines were canceling their cruises into June and July, along came some unexpected and truly remarkable developments that looked to be at last game changing. As all of that excitement built, Disney threw a wobbly ball into the mix for US cruise passengers and Cunard ramped up and further added to the dismay. So what is going on and what does all of this contradictory news mean for travelers like you and me keen to really understand when is cruising going to start up again and when can we go cruising? The eight lines I mentioned that have just pushed their earliest start dates into June and July are Princess, Holland America, Seabourn, Celebrity, Silver Sea, Azamara, Virgin and Royal Caribbean. However, in those announcements, the first big signs that things were starting to change for cruising, but not the biggest, which I will get to next, were buried in those. For me, the most significant part of the announcement by Royal Caribbean Lines, specifically that they were cancelling cruises into June, is where they had to say, well, actually, we are not cancelling everything. Singapore sailings for Singapore residents on Quantum of the Seas that have been sailing incident-free for many months, they continue. Odyssey of the Seas that will be starting up for vaccinated Israeli residents to Greece and Cyprus will be starting up as planned. As will Chinese sailings for both locals on the Spectrum of the Seas and Voyage of the Seas, they're starting up in a few weeks' time. So this came just days after Ben Bouldan, the Vice President of Europe, Middle East and Africa for that line, he told Cruise Critic that they are actively looking around the world for countries that also want to work on starting running cruises for local residents, even if that means offering domestic itineraries only. He stressed that the key was that successful restarts depend on really good cooperation from politicians in government, both in terms of the home ports, but also green the places that you can actually visit. So this is true, as in addition to those countries I mentioned so far, the others with sailings allowed have been Italy, where there's a massive cruise ship building industry and where the Prime Minister was actively involved in helping and letting cruising open. They're also happening with German lines, including the Royal Caribbean part-owned mine Schiff and Habeck Lloyd lines, another country with a huge cruise ship building industry, and of course, therefore leverage with government. They're also happening in Norway, where Hurtigruten is locally owned and sails between all the ports along its vast coast. Sailings, of course, have also been taking place successfully in Japan and Taiwan, again, because governments have pushed for that. Announcements by Holland America and Princess interestingly also spoke about cancellations by region and even by port, suggesting we're heading towards more regions opening before others. So bearing all that in mind, along came the pleasant, surprising news that cruising will be allowed to resume in the UK from May 17th. The first sign that something was about to happen was when the biggest UK baseline Pino Cruises, they suddenly pulled all their advertised cruises through to September, October, saying they would aim to introduce domestic cruises for UK residents once that was possible. That was quickly followed by Princess Cruises, who were due to have three ships sailing out of the UK. They did the same for all of the UK departures, cancelling those, saying they would do the same. Cunard, meantime, said they will also do domestic UK cruises in summer on Queen Elizabeth cancelling their existing Queen Victoria right through to the end of August, Queen Elizabeth to the 11th of October, and Queen Mary II until the 12th of November. Royal Caribbean, at the same time they've got ship space in the UK in the summer, said it's possible they would do the same, but they didn't actually cancel anything. Then the big news came. As in those other countries where we've seen sailings happen, the UK Maritime Minister, Robert Courts, he took a leadership move. He was encouraged by the very fast rollout of the vaccines in the UK, and the Prime Minister's roadmap to opening travel from May the 17th, and he announced the government will support the resumption of cruising from the 17th of May. Now, there are five big unanswered questions that are worth thinking about. Number one, will this be for all of the UK or England only? The roadmap and the date for opening of travel for, and cruising from May the 17th is currently only for England, and the devolved administrations in Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, they define their own roadmaps. However, Jackie Doyle Price, she's the chair of the Transport Committee, she's the MP for Tilbury, which is the home of the London Cruise Terminal. She said this is the point we will be taking up with devolved administrations in the coming days to ensure that the reopening of domestic cruise is UK-wide. Second question is what will the protocols be? Will they be those proposed by CLEAR and the lines? They, those mirror 
those being used by MSC cruisers in Italy, Royal Caribbean in Singapore, those kind of things. So it's reduced capacity, testing, masks, distancing, line and excursions. Or are they going to incorporate vaccines as per Royal Caribbean in Israel? Or will they be closer to pre-pandemic cruising as the roadmap in the UK? It actually has the goal of removing restrictions like social distancing from the middle of June. That's by when all UK adults who want to be vaccinated would have been. So that's something we still need to find out. The third question is, when will the cruises actually start up? All the lines are saying it will be many, many weeks or even months that they will need to plan the cruises, they'll need to plan the ports, they'll need to get the crew back, they'll need to train them, implement any new protocols, restock ships and all that kind of stuff. Now p cruises have said it's going to take several weeks after May the 17th to restart. Cunard have said in a tweet some months before sailing. Saga have suspended until late June anyway. Fred Olsen also suspended till the end of June. Hutu Gruten, they've suspended right through to the end of May. So we're not sure when these cruises will actually be starting, but they are allowed from the 17th of May. The fourth question is how many ships will be sailing? Even with lots of demand from UK residents keen to have a break this summer, it does seem hard to see all the fleet from p Princess, maybe Cunard, maybe Royal Caribbean, MSC Cruises, Fred Olsen, Saga, Hutu Grit and all of those other lines that sail out of the UK. Is there going to be enough demand to put on all the ships if they're just going to UK ports? The fifth question is when will they be able to sail further afield? There's a really, really strong suggestion that the UK will not be lifting the travel advice against international ocean cruising. So they won't be letting ships sail out of the UK. So that's a really big question. How long will it be just UK? Now the answers to these will of course emerge and I will update you as they do. The key point that all of this it shows it takes government and political will to open up cruising, which brings me to what is happening and what this all means for the United States. Now, Disney are the latest line to give their thoughts on timing. And they said they do not expect cruising in the United States until autumn, which is a really, really long way away. Bob Chapek, who's the CEO of Disney, he said at their latest shareholders meeting, and I'm gonna quote exactly what he said. As of right now, we don't have any definitive information in terms of when we will be able to open our cruise lines. We are anticipating that with some luck and the increase in the number of vaccinations out there and the encouraging that we are seeing that maybe by this fall, we might be able to have some limited operations of our cruise ships. So that's pretty pessimistic timing in terms of what is likely to happen in the United States. There is. I think one big problem the USA faces that those other countries like the UK don't. Now, some of you, of course, will say it's the CDC, and I will come to that. But unlike the various countries that are opening to cruising, the United States does not have the option of doing domestic cruises or even cruises to nowhere. Ships have to sail to a foreign port due to the Passengers Vessel Services Act. Almost all of the countries allowing cruising, like the UK, like Italy, are domestic cruises for residents only. Those governments and their health authorities, they have more control, they have total oversight, they have the support networks there for their residents and any ports they call on. It stays within the country. But for the USA, the ships have to leave and call somewhere that is not under US jurisdiction and supervision. This has to be an issue in my view, kind of bubbling in in the background. You know, politicians and governments in those other countries, they have really been supporting cruise opening but it's all domestic because it's really totally, everything's within their control. Then in the United States, there is of course the CDC. Now the CDC still, well, certainly at the time of recording, it's not issued the technical specifications for even the test cruises they require, despite early in February saying it was just a few weeks away. So cruising is really in limbo with no timeline. Now, as I was preparing this mandate, I noticed the CDC remain unenthusiastic, not just about cruising, but travel opening more generally in and out of the United States, which does, it really doesn't bode well. This revelation came in a White House coronavirus response briefing just after the CDC had said that those who are vaccinated can meet with others who are vaccinated indoors in private settings without social distancing or masks. Now that initial announcement excited many who thought this could be a sign of how protocols for things like cruising could head once vaccines are rolled out further, kind of restriction free. However, the recently Biden appointed 
CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky said, and I'm going to quote here, every time there is a surge in travel, we have a surge in cases in this country. So that doesn't augur well for their enthusiasm to open travel. Two federal health authorities officials, they actually told the CNN that as the CDC worked to prepare guidance for people who are fully vaccinated against COVID-19, there was a discussion around the possibility of changing travel recommendations, but there was not a lot of enthusiasm or momentum within the CDC to adjust that right now. So that's not very encouraging. Building on that, as I've covered before, cruise line executives are also wondering if the CDC are wrestling with having vaccines in any final requirements. So, for example, asked about the requirement of vaccines to cruise in the last couple of days, Tom McAlpin of Virgin Voyages, he told Travel Weekly magazine, and I'm going to quote him, a lot of this depends upon what the requirements of the CDC are. I'm not a scientist, so I don't understand how all of that works, but I suspect that as we get a very high level of folks vaccinated within the US and the UK, things may change. We may not have to get 100% vaccinated. It would be nice to get 100%. But I don't know that is achievable or needed. So again, lots of questions still looming. So based on all of this, it seems there is still little or even no change in the momentum, such as in the UK, for the US administration to yet put dates and timing to that framework for conditional sailing. So as an interest of party looking in, in those countries where cruising has opened, it has definitely been led by the government, it's been led by ministers, not by the health authorities in practice equivalent to the CDC. So until that changes, it does feel like USA cruising is not going to move that much. There therefore has been lots of speculation if US lines will try and set up home porting in the Caribbean meantime. Again, this seems pretty unlikely because the logistics to build those supply chains to cope with the massive volume of supplies, getting the numbers of people in and out to join multiple ships and cruises, it, it will probably take as long as waiting and working through the CDC process, which of course, once that adventure gets done, it'll be simpler, it'll be more lucrative, it'll be more easy for everybody involved. Now, of course, Royal Caribbean will be using Barbados as a home port with the grandeur of the seas from December. They're gonna be doing seven and 40 night Southern Caribbean itineraries from that island. Cozumel, as you might've seen, has been lobbying uh, to get cruises to home port there, but that does seem a long shot, doesn't have the infrastructure. So as news of these kind of small scale but really steady openings are happening around the world for cruisers to get back onto ships in summer, we are still waiting for movement from the US. The rate of vaccinations, it does seem really hopeful and confidence to maybe move to the test cruise stage we'll hopefully hear about soon. Now as we look at other big cruising nations, Australia too has the government and a minister engaged. The federal health minister, Greg Hunt, he's already said the government they're working very closely with state and territory agencies, national health committees, and the cruise industry to develop kind of a framework for the stage resumption of cruise ships in what he calls a manner that's proportionate to the public health risk. Now, of course, ships are banned until the middle of June in Australia, and in reality, the season is over because they're heading into winter. So the real impact also may not be until much later in the year, but the good news is there is the government engaged. So clearly, we're starting to see pockets of domestic cruising opening, and I'm sure more are gonna come, and I think these updates are gonna really accelerate with how many more are coming. Now, if you found this update helpful, I've pulled together a short list of three other Tips for Travelers videos which have some key information about the cruising outlook, and importantly, the protocols and what to expect for the rest of this year. I think you'll find those interesting, so why not click to watch those right now?